War going on too, there's an anger in large parts of the country that have not felt blessed by the benefits of globalisation. In contrast to bustling metropolitan hubs like London or Manchester, which voted Remain. And that schism has asserted itself to the shock of those at the top. Filmmaker Nick Blakemore has spent the last couple of days in Burnley, which voted two thirds for Brexit, to see what was motivating voters there. Control. We have lost control. But for me it comes down to when we vote somebody in, whoever gets in the government, they make the rules. And at the moment, there's somebody above them. That's why, that's why I'm going to be voting to leave. What really gets me is this, yeah? Well, I fought for this country in 82. Fair play. Right? This government now is going immigrants. Here we go. Tick. We can all come in. Oh, I don't want it. Send them back home. We join the EU for one thing, yeah? To have a better life, yeah? True. Hey, hang on. Go on. And then it comes to light, it's not a better life. Vote for hope. That was the thing. Vote for Do not vote for fear, vote for hope. Yes. Vote you can't leave. vote for hope. There's yeah. no hope nowadays. You've We've had enough of the Tory scenario, the austerity, the cuts. Why is that the fault of Europe? The minute this referendum's over, and if Remain win, that's it. Our NHS is gone. I think we should leave and give it a try. And we should get our independence back because it's just got absolutely yeah. out of hand. It has. It, I've got to admit, it's, it's the one thing. It came down to democracy, sovereignty and the NHS. There's good and bad. There's a lot of people come from abroad and they've done good for this country. Exactly. I was born in Germany. I'm Precisely. a living foreigner myself. We're not little Englanders. We've always looked outwards. England was the greatest thing I've ever known when I came over here. And you were free, and if you worked hard, you got rewarded. Right? Correct. I never had a day's benefit or anything, never taken anything out of this country. I'm 83 years of age, and all I can get is single poor tax allowance. Not that I need it, I've got food in my belly, I'm getting by and I'm not complaining. Precisely. Because when I look around, there's a lot of folk worse. Yeah. But I do object of people that's worked all their life, just stuff being taken off them. None of us know what the future holds. That's, I think that's why everyone is undecided. This Nobody is the, knows what's going to happen. The, my main point is, you can't base your argument on a country and an entire super state that hasn't got your best interests at heart. Mm. And that is the that, That's my main all. reason for leaving. Well, who else is going to look after our country but us? Precisely. Good evening and welcome at the end of this momentous day when each one of us has had the chance to say what kind of country we want to live in. At 10 o'clock, the polling stations close after weeks, months, years of argument. The BBC is forecasting that the UK has voted to leave the European Union after more than 40 years. Come on in. Hello. Come on in. I want to come out first. Tell me, what's oh, your reaction? Um, I don't know yet. I haven't switched it on. I put these out, and I'm hoping I'm not going to look stupid. Um, I'm really, fingers crossed, hoping I'm not going to look well, stupid. Well, the BBC are calling it for leave. Really? Yeah. Seriously? We need to put the telly on. D Tanya, just tell me how you. How, what's your reaction to that? I'm over the moon. I'm, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Did it. Everybody woke up in time. Everybody listened. Everybody understands. Yes, it's going to be rough at the beginning, but we've done it.
Some views from Burnley there. Well, with me now, two historians, David Starkey and Kate Williams, from The Times, Tim Montgomery, and the writer and equality campaigner, Paris Lees. Paris, what's your reaction as you watch that? Um, I recognise those towns. That's where I'm from, Evan. Um, and I think these people are going to be really upset when they find out that they've been lied to. I think it's... It's misguided. Um, obviously, the people have voted with good intentions, but I think we are being led down a very dark path. Mm. Let's just ask whether the nation is in some way historically unusually divided. Kate, do you think we're in a... I do think we're incredibly divided. I think this is the biggest historical event, I mean, the most divisive event since the Civil War, and I think it's the most historical event since we've had the Act of Union itself. I mean, we see divisions here between North and South, between young and old, between the fact that Scotland is going to have a referendum, we, uh, Northern Ireland, uh, concerns about uh, Martin McGuinness is saying about joining together, and we know that a Scottish referendum is probably going to trigger questions about a referendum in Wales. So we're seeing massive divisions, and when we actually see a petition getting a lot of uh, people's signatures saying that London might actually set up as a separate city-state. I think it's a joke. Though, it, I don't, I'm it, not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. I think, but I think there is, no, it, I mean, there is some joking in it, but there is some, that, that I think shows the leg, the, the level of the divisions. It's and huge. You're both, you're both Remainers, and, and now you two are both Brexit supporters. David, do you think the nation is this? Historically divided at the moment. It is, but I think uh, Kate is slightly exaggerating. I can think of Ireland. I can think of Roman Catholicism. I can think of all sorts of things that have split us. Uh, even uh, the, the whole question of whether we fought the Nazis or not. You know, the country was hugely divided. I think the more interesting question is why this has happened. And it seemed to me your Burnley film was absolutely right. What has happened is the European Union is a proxy. It's a proxy for deep discontent with experts, with the political class, and so on. Um, and I think it's also the fact that the political parties have been led for the last nearly 20 years by leaders, Blair on the one hand and Cameron on the other, that have thought it was very clever to kick their supporters in the ghoulies. Do we need to, if now, it's a proxy, other words, we was it the right thing to get out of it? If it's just <laughs> yes. a proxy, you're, yes. you're implying it's like, well, let's just kick something and that's the EU's over there, let's do that. I well, mean, I, think, I think an awful lot of people actually voted on that basis. Right. Um, and it's very important we recognise that, which of course also allows for the kind of point that Daniel Hannan was making, that perhaps we could begin to reunite as a very real possibility. And I think that what we've got to do is something which no recent government has had the courage to do. We've got to rediscover a sense of a national interest. Britain okay. has spent the whole of its time arguing we've got to be good. We've got to support U European rights because otherwise the Russians will misbehave. We've really got to start to do a de Gaulle. But, Tim, is it... The voters we saw there in Burnley are actually mm. the ones political parties are finding it quite mm. difficult to reach. Mm. Any political party, are they? Mm. Boris what, didn't. What, 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 is the, what is the answer to that? Because the, they're not natural Conservative voters. Your party is nowhere near them. Sure. And you talk about Britain being divided, but you know, I'm currently based in Washington for The Times. And I'm, of course, seeing the whole Trump phenomenon over there. We're all seeing the, the Trump phenomenon. And I think we're sort of six, seven years after the global crash now. And I think immediately after the global crash, people just wanted governments that stabilised the situation. But now there's the hunger for reform and remedy. And I think we are seeing that right across the world. Listen, and today's one? revolt, uh, yesterday's revolt by uh, poorer Britons, and they were the overwhelming explanation for why we're leaving the European Union. That has to be heeded. This isn't just a vote to leave the European Union. Right. This is a cry for help from a huge proportion of our population who think politics has stopped working. And it is a vote against austerity, I absolutely agree. But when you think of places like Wales get, has got 500 million subsidy, huge votes against austerity. They talked about poverty. We didn't really see talk, much talk about sovereignty in the same way. And the concern is that these people, it is not going to give them any, it's not going to so improve see, the life of Burnley. Very elementary confusion. You're assuming are that it's all, yes, you are. You're assuming that the economy is always what mattered. What this vote shows, but austerity is, that, is, no, is tied what, up with the economy. Shh, what this vote shows is that it's culture that matters. It can, and, it can be. Well, and it's it can a lack be, of politicians and, connecting with voters. If you look at Joe Cox, she was doing a good job of it. The SNP in Scotland is doing a good job of it. So I think that Labour and the Conservatives both need to put their hands up and admit that they're just not getting it right. But sorry, your, your point about those voters in Burnley, they are, at the moment, they're floating voters. A 
conservative leader who was as clever as Disraeli. Remember, it's Disraeli who turns captures the working man's vote in 1867 and there's the possibility now of a Boris or another charismatic Tory politician who invents the national <laughs> interest. Right. Let's ask yeah. the Remainers whether yeah. you think Boris is a healing, a healing person. I think this. Boris, uh, his speech, it was, it was just extraordinary. That wasn't a victory speech. I think he realises that he's got it wrong and that this is really, really, really serious. And I just hope that we can actually have another referendum because I think a lot of people loser. actually... Bad loser. Oh, Joe, Jonathan bad loser. Loser. Well, I'd rather, I think actually I'd rather I'm not sure be it is a, a bad not, loser. I've got more important no, things to I'm not sure it is a bad loser because people actually feel that they have been lied to and that's what people they have. People have been people, lied there's so, to. There's so much more voter regret than I've I, ever seen before. Most people say, OK, this is a bit of a clear illustration why the vote went why it did. I think people are going to be surprised with Boris Johnson. He's probably the likely next prime minister of this, this country. Actually, you look at his record. He was championing the living wage mm -hmm. before other conservatives. He Same-sex marriage. <laughs> and he opposed the tax credit cuts that George Osborne Let's, proposed. Look, talked, He's much more of an interesting about conservative the, 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 the than people sort of think. The Burnley mm -hmm. divide and the, the, the metropolitan elite. Paris, what about the generational divide? Because that is really quite striking. The under 45s would have clearly voted to stay in and the over 45s have clearly voted to take us out. Well, there was a great headline on Vice today uh, which said, Grandma, what have you done? And I think that a lot of millennials will be feeling that this morning. I think it's incredibly selfish and I personally will not forgive or forget because the older generation don't have to live here as long as the younger generation so do. So are we going to introduce, uh, uh, for example, a cut-off point <laughs> beyond which you can't vote? Well, are you recognising no, your, no, no, your sense of no, sublime self-entitlement? No. Are we going to have those under 35 with two votes? Hang on a minute. Let, young, let young, people, young, 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 young people, young 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 people have already had so much taken away from me. I don't need to take away my airtime as well, Mrs. Starkey. So what we're actually looking at is you a generation of people question. who've... Well, you you're not questions. letting me because you're interrupting just me because you're a privileged white man who just wants to speak over me. And this is the problem. Young people are getting very sick of it, sick of being spoken over, sick of being patronised. And we've, we have and to pay for our education in a way that your generation didn't have to. You know, we're just everything that gets taken away. The young people are being cut out first. And I think there's a lot of frustration. And, you know, for, for young people, you're just somewhere where we and go the, on holiday right. and go and clubbing. Okay. You know, and we the, don't have this xenophobia. And the young vote is going to be vital in Scotland. We've caused the Scottish referendum included 16 year olds. They were massive in the turnout. And I think that this is what we, we also say, I noticed Nigel Farage saying, well, we can engage with the Commonwealth. But I've been watching the Australian media who have been saying today, why are we still linked to this country is going to be so diminished, they're going to lose Scotland, possibly Wales, then the Commonwealth is probably due for the chop as well. Is, is this this is not what you want. Be careful what you wish for, is this kind of message. I, I think at the moment, in our relationship with Europe, we have a situation where people from Africa, Asia, Australasia are actually second class status when it comes to coming into Britain. We prioritise European. The problem isn't little Englandism, it is little Europeanism. Britain now has the opportunity to open ourselves to the world. There won't what be a you, Britain this thank time. Thank you so much. Ten ten that is about it. What a 24 thank hours you. it's been. Normally, we're meant to be the quietly stable nation that doesn't do revolutions or cut people's heads off, but today we've been rocking the world.